What's up? What's up? You? All right. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you? Focus? Focus? We're all about focus, then? Get it done. Right? We're going for a record tonight. This is great. Sorry. <laughs> focus? Get it going, get it over. Yeah. Okay. It's all good. <clears throat> Good for you. Pleasure or business? Yes. Really? Okay. Oh, really? And where's he? How are you flying? From Chicago? Or? Oh, from here? <laughs> where, where are they routed? Where are you routed to? Chicago. So I've been doing some rides with you guys. I just did my own before. I thought I'm going to get yeah, uh, three minutes, Regina. Bring your buddies if you got any. You get five bucks, five bucks for everyone you bring. They all gather right here. That's not what you're trying to make a grand entry. Right. You can't all be in a small conference room. They're in transit. Oh. It's a chance to <laughs> Oh, Lord. No. I think she may be asked for no, I don't want to go down that slippery slope and then everybody's going to I we shouldn't have done that the last time. But this was not two weeks ago I got an email from her. So. But she can make some of those presentations at the meeting coming up on the meeting. Come to the meeting. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of that. It's, yeah, that's it's, a, lot of, a lot of that's going to be in that, in that agenda. Mm-hmm. Oh, all to me, it sets the wrong precedent. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Isn't your message at the... There's and that's, oh, well, yeah. that's not for today. I, well, I guess it's the next month. Privilege of the board. 
and ask people to get that. Is there a post to picture? Okay. She probably you don't have I was thinking it's up. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is a nice picture. Yeah. 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 Y
Uh, there are no reports from city offices. I see Laura O'Sullivan came in today to be with us. Thank you so much. Um, now I'll entertain a motion to rise and join the committee of the whole. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you. There you go, Gavin. Committee of the Whole is now in session. This is the portion of the council meeting where the full council meets as a committee. During each ordinance, members of the public will have an opportunity to speak either in favor or in opposition. Your comments will be limited to five minutes per bill. With that, would the city clerk please read 5618. 5618. Public hearing on an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, annexing to and bringing with in the city limits of South Bend, Indiana, and amending the zoning ordinance for property located in Clay Township, contiguous therewith, Councilmanic District Number 4, for 17330 State Road 23, South Bend, Indiana, previously, previous bill 1217, public Hearing portion only. Is there a motion to accept the substitute? So, so Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The motion carries. Is there a committee report, please? Yes, the Zoning and Organization Committee met, Mr. Chair, this afternoon, and we bring this bill to you with a favorable recommendation um, that was based on the written commitments. Thank you. Is there a presenter, please? Good evening. Angela Smith from the Area Planning Commission with offices located on 11th Forest Building. First of all, thank you for canceling uh, Christmas Eve. That was one of those days I was not looking forward to coming in. <laughs> <laughs> we have so much zoning to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, before you is a petition to rezone the northeast corner of State Road 23 in Douglas. The property is currently zoned C commercial in the county tied to a final site plan that limits it to a financial institution. Um, when the property owner has decided to uh, renovate the property and they're connecting to city utilities, they were encouraged and are here before you tonight to seek to uh, rezone and annex within the city limits of South Bend to CB community business. The property to the east is already in the city zone CB community business and to the north in the city zone O office, a daycare facility. To the south, we still have B business in the county and our single family. And across State Road 23, we have a medical complex and an assisted living facility zoned um, B business and R2 residential. <coughs> the current site, as you can see here, is a former uh, financial institution which will be demolished to make way for a gas station. There is a great change in some entrance uh, restrictions here that the petitioner will be working on to modify to, to make the site work. This is the site plan that was presented to the Area Plan Commission. Um, not a significant amount has changed since the Area Plan Commission, although the, the entire site has been shifted so that they can meet the setback requirement, and the drive entrance has been moved further from the intersection to share with the adjacent property to the east, which is going to be a gas station under the CB Community Business District. Um, in front of you this evening, the amended ordinance adds a section of the ordinance to allow for this to be tied to the written commitments that were presented. We added the written commitment number nine, which would allow for no automo automotive service or repair will occur on the site um, after the committee meeting this afternoon. Um, this came to you from the Area Plan Commission with an unfavorable recommendation back in 2017. <laughs> I'd be happy to answer any questions. Sure, and actually we'll hear from the petitioner and then we'll open it up to questions. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the council, my name is Stephen Studer. I'm an attorney with offices of 4101 Edison Parkway, Mishawak, Indiana. Uh, here also this evening with me are two of the owners of the property, Mr. Patel and Mr. Singh, and also Mr. Brian McMorrow of Adam March, who can answer any additional questions on the site plan. Uh, as Angela mentioned, we're seeking to be zoned from a, a county district, C commercial, to city district, CB community business, and annex from the city. Um, I'd be happy to go through the booklet I have in the committee, but in the interest of brevity, it might make more sense if I ask any additional questions. Uh, as Angela mentioned, we did agree to the uh, other commitment <coughs> not to have any service repair on the site. Thank you so much. Are there any questions for a presenter or a petitioner at this time? Yes. Yes. Could you please um, share about your interaction with the neighbors, people who have come to the area plan meeting that was in opposition, and could you share that because I think that had a good um, understanding of why we have a change in our decision tonight to what the area plan has recommended. Sure. Thank you, Councilman. Um, yeah, there are two issues. One is that we met with uh, Councilman Davis and Councilman Broden regarding the site plan and issues regarding 
uh, cut out uh, road cuts, etc. And we did make a change to the site plan. We moved the, uh, the entrance on uh, Douglas Road 60 feet to the east, 140 to 200 feet, which is part of the written commitments. Uh, we had five neighbors originally that had expressed some concerns at the Area Planning Commission. One of those I mentioned was from North Liberty. Uh, one was an uh, owner of competitor, uh, and, and three other ones that are in the neighborhood that we did meet with. We met with two of those three, um, and they expressed no concern and also advised that they would, they would talk to the third person as well. Uh, their only concern was that we were not going to ask for substantial variances that would change the character of the neighborhood, and we're not asking for variances. So they were satisfied, they were comfortable, and uh, uh, they've expressed no opposition to this particular petition. Thank you. And what you did with the Exxon sign, you said, um, like the color, the brightness? Oh, yes. Well, that was with the uh, city's Department of Community Investment. I think that's the right term. Yeah, thank you. Um, typically, Exxon would have a, a, a lit up, um, this is going to be an Exxon a gas station. They would have a bright red, their logo colors are bright red, et cetera. Uh, in order to keep with the character of the neighborhood, we have toned that down to keep with the, the current uh, color scheme of, of brick and, and browns, and so we've toned it down to meet with the, the current standards of the neighborhood. So we've agreed to do that as well. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Thank you. I will be using, by the way, monument sign. No, no pylon sign will be using a monument sign at the corner as well, uh, more in character with, with the neighborhood. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no other questions for presenter or petitioner, we'll move to the public portion. Anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor? Anyone from the public wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing no one, the public portion is closed. Back to the council. Make a motion to um, um, bring to the full council a favorable recommendation. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 For, Aye. The, for the substitute version. Yes. For the substitute yes. version. Do we have a copy of that substitute version? I'm sorry. Or did anyone get it? He has it right here. There's a motion for a favorable recommendation and a second. For the substitute version, all those in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The motion <laughs> Entertain a motion to rise well, and resolve. Okay. Okay. Can you just email that to the rest of everybody later for the record? Uh, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm a motion to rise and resolve from the committee of the whole. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Please. Full Council is now back in session. There are no third uh, readings tonight. We'll move to resolutions. Um, Ms. Fowler, would you please read 1859? 1859. A resolution of the Common Council of the City of Southern Indiana adopting a written physical plan and establishing a policy for provisions of services to an annexation area in Clay Township, Old National Annexation Area. Thank you. Is there a committee report? Yes, Mr. President. The Zoning and Annexation Committee met this afternoon, and we bring this part of the project, 1859, with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. DeVita. Good evening. <coughs> Michael DeVita, planner with the City's Farm Community Investment with offices on the 14th floor of this building. Um, so this fiscal plan is for a 1.9 acre annexation that's been requested by the property owner of 17730 State Road 23, which as you just uh, heard, uh, petitioner proposes to redevelop the site for a gas station and convenience store. So no capital improvements are planned by the city as part of this annexation. Water is already available along both State Road 23 and Douglas Road with uh, sewer already available on Douglas as well. The adjacent portion of uh, Douglas is already within city limits. A portion of State Road 23 will be annexed, but it will continue to be maintained by INDOT. Annexation area will be added to the Common Council's 4th District and served by Police Speed 11, Fire Station 3, Emergency Medic 3, and Code Enforcement Area 4. These and other non-capital services, services will be in place within one year of the effective date of the uh, annexation with response times comparable to other areas of the city. I would then ask for the Council's adoption of this resolution, but we would be happy to take any questions tonight. Any questions? I have a question made not necessarily for um, Mr. <coughs> DeVita, but in reference to this bill, I'm guiding 5618 to our turn. The 5618, the third reading of that will be at the next meeting? Correct. Okay, and the rationale. And the state statute, the final vote of the council cannot be made until after 14 days have passed from the public hearing. 
Okay. But the fiscal plan should not be voted on that. Yes. And then the fiscal plan can be voted on. Yes. And then um, 14 days after all of that, we all get. The fiscal plan has to be approved before the annexation ordinance can be voted. So the 5618 next time would just be a third reading, would not necessarily be heard in the afternoon or in the meeting. Is that correct? correct? That's correct. There will be no public hearing. It's just consultation. Okay. I'm at peace then, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Davina? Seeing that, we'll open up to the public. Anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor of 1859, please come to the podium. Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak against 1859, please come to the podium. Seeing none, we'll turn it back to council. Motion for adoption. Second. Second. Ms. Fowler, roll call. Councilmember Preston? Aye. Councilmember Broken? Aye. Councilmember Teska? Aye. Vice President Davis? Aye. Councilmember Gordon? Aye. Councilmember Furley? Aye. Councilmember White? Aye. President Scott? Aye. Eight aye. Thank you. Uh, 1865, please. 1865, a resolution confirming the adoption of a declaratory resolution designating certain areas within the city of Stockton, Indiana, commonly known as 4836 Western Avenue, Stockton, Indiana, 46619, as an economic revitalization area for purposes of a seven-year rural property tax abatement for now Connect LLC. Thank you. Uh, this being a confirming, we'll go to the presenter. Please state your name and address and a brief statement. Good evening, Council. Also, the uh, Fortune Floor Community Investment Department was here a couple weeks ago representing um, uh, Mr. Till and Nilketh uh, LLC for the Dairy Queen off of Western Avenue. Um, she sends her apologies. She was unable to make it, had family obligations out of town. Um, but again, the seven year real property tax abatement, over $1.6 million in investment. Um, and over 40 plus jobs coming to that area of town. Um, the community investment department is really excited and in support of this uh, development. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any questions from council? Okay. Seeing none. Thank you, sir. We'll open up to the public. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? 1865. Please come to the podium. Seeing none. Anyone wishing to speak against? 1865. Please come to the podium. Back to council. Motion for adoption. Second. Ms. Fowler. Council Member Brody? Aye. Council Member Teska? Aye. Vice President Davis? Aye. Council Member Gordy? Aye. Council Member Furley? Aye. Council Member White? Aye. Council Member Preston? Aye. President Scott? Aye. Eight aye. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Fowler, 1867, please. 1867. A resolution confirming the adoption of a declaratory resolution designating certain areas within the city of Southland, Indiana, commonly known as 3201 West Calvert Street, Southland, Indiana, 46613, as an economic revitalization area for purposes of a five-year personal property tax abatement for Southland Ethanol LLC. Thank you. Um, is there a presenter? Sir. Good evening. Dan Buckenmeyer, DCI 14th floor of this building. So South Bend Ethanol, uh, plant to start production here at South Bend back in 84, went through some financial difficulties more recently. Uh, at the end of last year, we started to talk to a few different potential purchasers, including Mercur Mercuria, who ended up purchasing the uh, 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 plant and uh, worked with them really starting back uh, at the end of last year through now to work with them and understand how the city could support them in making this uh, a great investment in the city. Uh, their investment is going to be about $30 million in new equipment. It is a personal property tax abatement. Uh, it will raise their manufacturing ca capacity. It will make the plant more efficient. It will allow them to purchase more uh, corn from regional farmers. Um, the estimated economic impact across the uh, region is estimated to be about $140 million annually in terms of just the ripple effect of what the uh, new and expanded plant will do. 66 jobs will be retained, five new jobs will be created. Um, the average wage there is about $31 per hour. Um, 
We'll also, uh, with the expansion, make South Bend a direct international exporter of another byproduct, uh, that being distilled dried grains, which will be exported directly from South Bend to, uh, uh, I, I believe, domestic and foreign markets. So the tax abatement itself is a five-year abatement. During that period, uh, we are estimating that about $480,000 in taxes will be abated. However, during that five-year period, they will still pay over $3 million, $3.2 million in taxes. Uh, when you look at it across, we usually have the slide up here, a 10-year look, uh, across a 10-year uh, uh, horizon over the next 10 years with the newly expanded plant uh, between personal, real, and low, it, their tax total, even with this abatement, will be well over $8.2 million contributed to the city and our residents. Uh, DCI brings it with uh, a positive recommendation and hopes for your support. Thank you, Council Members. Any questions? A general question in nature. Um, with regard to tax abatements, I, I believe with, let me go back. So with regard to um, uh, TIF dollars, and is it true also with tax abatements that there's an annual report or scorecard, you know, relative to these projections in terms of economic impact, um, mm -hmm. wages, jobs, yes. salaries? Yes. Okay. Uh, I know so, I, so I with, think I've seen it before. But. Yes. Well, specifically with tax abatements, there is an annual CF1 report is the the designation which comes uh, is due by May 15th okay. and that outlines all of those elements you know what, how they're doing uh, as far as a track record on investment made jobs created and so on and so forth and then DCI uh, uh, tracks that and of course we give that report to you by June 15th every year and then is that uh, just a follow-up question sure. is that um, does that have a look back as well or, or do you revisit let's say I'm, I'm so if it's an annual uh, look, does it go back to um, tax abatements that were granted four or five years ago? And well, each tax abatement would have its own unique reporting. Right. Uh, so if there were, perchance, a, a company has a real uh, uh, property tax abatement as well as a personal property mm -hmm. tax abatement, they would report out to us on both of those. And I think to answer the first part of your question, it is a cumulative report, cumulative, but we collect you. those year over year, so we can still track the annual progress, if you will. And does council get benefit of that? Um, and that's with, I'm sorry, that's within the CF1? Yes, ma'am. The cumulative aspect yes. of those previous? Okay, mm -hmm. thanks. Um, thanks, I appreciate you uh, sure. clarifying that. I, I thought I had remembered seeing that, but I wasn't certain as to how um, how much depth as well goes into that scorecard and what is actually reported out. But We're all going to dig deeper if you I'll follow up with you on that. But I'd like to walk through that again. Thanks. Certainly. Are there any other questions? Council. Seeing that we'll open up to the public. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of 1867, please come to the podium. Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak against 1867, please come to the podium. Turn it back to council. Motion for adoption. Second. All, uh, Ms. Fowler. Councilman Chester? Nay. Vice President Davis? Aye. Councilman Verhoorn? Aye. Councilman Curley? Aye. Councilman Verhoorn? Aye. Councilman Preston? Aye. Councilmember Brogan? Aye. President Scott? Aye. Seven ayes. Thank you. We'll move to first readings. Ms. Fowler, would you please read 5718? 5718. First reading on an ordinance to vacate the following described property. First East West Alley, lying west of Long Street and north of Colby Street, Colby Boulevard, running west 158 feet, length and terminating at an existence of North South Valley, all in South Bend, Indiana. Mr. President, I recommend this be sent to the Public Works and Property Vacation Committee and set for second reading in public hearing on 1126. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. <coughs> Ms. Fowler, 5818. 5818. First reading on an ordinance to vacate the following described property, North South portion of Sampson Street, 40 inches width, running 
south 140 feet from south right away of East Randolph Street, ending at right away of East West Alley between Robertson and Hope Streets. This also could be sent to the Public Works and Property Vacation Committee and set for November 26th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Thank you. 5918. 5918, first reading on an ordinance amending the zoning ordinance for property located at 1405 and 1505 East Howard Street, Councilmanic District No. 4 in the City of South Bend, Indiana. I move this be sent to the Area Plan Commission for uh, their meeting on 1218 and uh, back to the Zoning and Annexation Committee for our first meeting of the year on 1-4. Second. 114. 114. Sorry. Second. I'll read my own writing. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. 6018, please. 6018. First reading on an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, authorizing the issuance and sale of an aggregate principal amount of not to exceed four million eight hundred thousand of the City of South Bend, Indiana Economic Development Tax Increment Revenue Bonds for the Community Education Center Project, designating bonds as limited obligations of the city and authorizing and approving other actions in respect thereto. Motion to send the community investment for 1126. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. 6118, please. 6118, first reading on the ordinance of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, amending Chapter 17 of the South Bend Municipal Code to add a new Article 14, establishing interim storm water utility rates, and amending Chapter 2, Article 14, to create a new fund for these revenues to be known as the Storm Sewer Fund Number 667. I move to send this to the Utilities Committee for public hearing and second reading on 1126. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay. Two nays. Are we doing a roll call? Yes. All right. Um, Vice President Davis? <laughs> Nay. Nay. Broden. I'm not seeing it yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Wait, Vice President Davis. <laughs> What'd you say? I said nay. You said nay. Okay. Um, Council Member Borden. Aye. Council Member Furley. Aye. Council Member White. Aye. Council Member Preston. Aye. Council Member Broden. Nay. Council Member Tesco. Aye. President Scott. Aye. Most controversial first reading I've ever heard. <laughs> motion, motion to send uh, 1869 to zoning annexation for 1126. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. We will now turn to new business. I think we have something from Ms. White. Yes, we want to share with the council and the um, audience that on tomorrow, Tuesday, November the 12th, we will be having a meeting with the faith leaders from the third and sixth districts in regards to uh, the community response of synthetic drugs. That meeting will be held at the Gateway Church in South Bend, located on Michigan Street, and will be there from 6 until 7.30 on tomorrow. Okay. Uh, my next announcement deals with on Tuesday, November 27th, uh, part of the budget hearing process, we have uh, started to have a discussion on TIF, and I indicated that we will continue that discussion uh, prior to the end of this year. So our meeting has been scheduled for Tuesday, November the 27th, from 5 to 7 p.m., and will be in the uh, council conference room. And that discussion will be focusing on TIF. Yeah. Do you have a question on that? Yeah, I have a question on that. Mm -hmm. Sure, go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, I heard that there was some state legislation that um, regarding TIF dollars, uh, people who get um, abatements that now, after so many years, that they did some some other kind of thing after ten years that they have some kind of um <laughs> they don't ever have, have to get back. There's another clause that's there, okay, I'll look into that. and so I'll, I will send you. Yeah. you know, 
So, so, so something about 10 years and then they don't, it's almost to the sense that they do the 10 years and they pledge that they're going to do this. And then after the 10th year that they can, if it's in a certain area of the community, it can be wiped away. Like and a distress area? Yes, yeah, distressed okay. area. Okay. So we'll do some research. I'll ask our attorney to okay. do some research on that. You know, thanks for bringing that up, too. Okay. I when you uh, were talking about the first meeting, you said Tuesday, uh, November 12th. No, 20. Uh, no. The first meeting is the Tuesday, third. November 13th. Oh, thank you. Okay. Mr. Preston? Thank you uh, quick, I'd like to just uh, request that we look at, get an update maybe at the next meeting, uh, maybe during committee on the South and Home Improvement, um, just to see how things okay. have been going with that. They got over 400 applications. So I'm just wondering, you know, how they're processing those. Okay. Uh, What's next? Uh, community investment. Community investment. I think it would be a community investment. Okay. 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 Thank you. Uh, anything else to my right? Yeah, just um, Joe Brown. the clubhouse of St. Joe County is having an open house um, Wednesday the 14th at their new home, if some folks were familiar with their services, uh -huh. to um, the time? mentally ill in our community. But it is from 5 to 7, and they had asked that, that be extended to council members with a short presentation at 6.15. Again, date and time? Date and time is November 14th, so this Wednesday, 1153 Northside Boulevard, 5 to 7. And okay. just location-wise, that is adjacent to the YMCA. Okay, thank you. Council President? I have a question to ask of uh, Councilwoman Joe Brolin. Did you schedule a uh, community meeting this month? 19th. The, okay, the 19th. Yep. Is that still being scheduled? A community meeting? A neighborhood, a neighborhood meeting. meeting. Oh, that's just for nor Northeast. Okay, I'm just it, responding to, no, that's okay. not a cut. <laughs> council meeting. No, do you want council members to be there to be present? Or if, if you'd like to, I think you got the invitation yes. from the neighbors specifically. From yes, mm -hmm. yeah, it's up to you to come. Okay. It's not a um, don't go whatever there. community. What's that? <laughs> that it's, not official one, council it's not official no. council meeting or committee meeting. meeting. Okay. It's just a neighborhood meeting, okay. and uh, they've asked for city administration folks to be okay. there to deal to talk about some safety issues. Okay. I think even also some traffic issues. Good. Okay. And the large members. That's yeah. That's you can go good there. Fit. Yeah. Okay, uh, anything else um, at this time for new business? <laughs> uh, Vice President Oliver Davis. Uh, before I do it, we have a neighborhood run village meeting tomorrow. Uh, well, not Wednesday at 6. And then there's another neighborhood meeting um, at Our Lady Hungry on Sunday at 4 o'clock. And the Wednesday meeting is at the Oliver Apartments, if you would like to come to that one. Um, as you all have received um, a copy, on this past Sunday, I sent out a call to action regarding weather amnesty in St. Joseph County, regarding the fact that um, it was our understanding that the um, weather amnesty was going to start on November the 1st and um, go through April the 1st. And as we can all see, that um, our cold weather has come to our area. Uh, snow outside and falling, and this weekend was cold. And so there were three um, different key parts, and I would like for our clerk um, to please read the uh, call to action and um, from that standpoint. And we'll read this into the record according. First of all, um, I, I did talk to our attorney, and could you please share with the advice that you gave me about reading it to the record? My advice was simply that to bring it into the record and there was no need to issue a written resolution or anything. This is a statement from you as a council member uh, to the public. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I'll go ahead and read this now from uh, council member Oliver Davis. A call to action regarding weather amnesty day in St. Joseph County, November 11, 2018. Dear local city and county elected officials, whereas the homeless weather amnesty site serves people from St. Joseph County, whereas the cold weather of being freezing temperatures is now in effect in our area, and whereas the homeless weather amnesty site was scheduled to be open on November 1, 2018, whereas the homeless weather amnesty site requires a fire inspection to receive a permit to 
to open is needed. And whereas the delay in opening the weather amnesty site has caused residents of our area to sleep in the cold, and whereas the homeless weather amnesty site is now scheduled to be open on December 1st, 2018, and whereas our local governments have buildings which have been used as warming sites. Therefore, the following is being requested of our local, of our local city and county elected officials. Section one that our local governments open up warming sites until the weather amnesty site is open for use. Section two, that letters be sent from each of our governments to state officials to expedite the opening of the site. Section three, that our local governments come together in the year of 2019 to plan solutions for the homeless population. Sincerely, South Bend Councilman Oliver Davis, District Number Six, Vice President of the South Bend Common Council. Thank you. Um, when you look at um, our vote in reverse in 2019, I would like to for us, as you see, I did not address the um, letter just to our local officials here in the city of South Bend because, as we have discussed, um, issues regarding homelessness is not just a South Bend issue. It's a issue that affects the city of Mishawaka, the city of South Bend, the whole St. Joe County, probably even those coming from Michigan and other areas. And so it's really a time for us, like we have done with other bodies, I, I really believe in this concept of us um, local elected officials coming together on major issues that have affected all of us. And hopefully in the 2019, we can have a meeting to invite the um, city of um, Mishawaka um, to invite um, the county leaders to come together and let's have a full-fledged discussion not only on the issue of weather amnesty early in the year but also about the ways that what we're already doing in our community because we are doing a lot of things that's why people come here but let's, let's um, highlight our strengths that we are looking at and then look at ways that we can definitely improve because you know this is back-to-back -back years that we have missed the target date for November the 1st and so let's look at what we can put in place on an earlier basis um, and we all know it's going to snow, we all know it's going to get cold so let's go ahead and do that. Um, point number two, um, I was reading an article that um, they did in the Tribune which was good um, that um, in terms of some officials may need to be contacted downstate, I don't know who they are but if we can determine who they are if we could either individually or, or um, those who would like to send a letter can, from this body and others can just send a letter just to let them know um, that we, whatever can be done um, that could expedite the time, um, we would encourage that because to have to go the next three weeks or so um, through Thanksgiving and the holidays is just a concern of mine. And, of, and then I explained um, in terms of number one where we are looking at bringing everybody together from that standpoint and to make sure that we are a, a target with everything. So, um, looking at uh, a, not only a city of South Bend effort, but a whole community effort of us coming together as elected officials. And um, this was sent to all, uh, because with all due respect to um, Mayor Pete, so much of the pressure has been on the 14th floor issue regarding this matter. And I do believe that this should not be just in his office. I think this should be, as you see in the letter, to uh, Mayor Wood and to also our um, President Morton and to President Andy Castelli and the commissioner level so we can all come together to address this kind of a situation as our local communities. Any comments, any other issues that you'd like to share? No? Uh, I guess I'd like to comment. Uh, I, I want to thank you for your um, initiative in uh, compiling this letter. Um, I support your call for um, uh, cross-municipality collaboration, um, you know, foremost. Um, we certainly need um, to hit this amnesty date. Uh, in a, I mean, it's, that, is a, that is a minimal threshold for us as a community uh, to provide. Um, and that's not to say that, you know, we don't have, a, we have a very active, let me go back, we have a very active and uh, community 
you know, that's huddled, that's meeting, that's providing direct services. Outstanding job. Leadership, quite frankly. <laughs> um, leading the country, leading other communities. Um, we have made historical investments and have also dedicated, I think, a historical amount of time to um, trying to develop solutions. Um, but missing that this deadline again, I think, is very problematic. I think it's indicative of not just the need for cross collaboration. I mean, I, I, I love your call for cross collaboration with other municipalities, um, but I think it also, and as I had unsuccessfully attempted to make the case uh, during the budget hearings and, and even in earlier hearings last year, um, is we really do need sustained leadership, um, sustained staff members working on this on a regular basis because it's not just punching, you know, the checkoff of a timely weather amnesty facility opening. We have a huge, huge project that we have a we as a community with the help of partners who've been, you know, in this field for years, um, you know, have spoken about the need, you know, for for the broader uh, center. Um, that is, is a non, you know, non shelter. So um, those are just, you know, kind of the, 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 the small and then the big things I think, you know, that's on our list to, to get done as a city. And those are just um, addressing and kind of trying to efficiently deal with what I consider are symptoms, <laughs> not really the underlying problems. So until we have sustained support and leadership, and I'm going on a limb here and I, I really don't care, until we have sustained leadership and, and someone who has the ability and the day-to-day -day wherewithal to to tackle this problem, not just the symptoms, but to go at the root causes. And, and I, I think the service providers have asked for us, they've asked for leadership, not just from the city of South Bend, but they've asked from leadership from other municipalities to frankly pony up so that we can do more in addressing, addressing the symptoms and the root causes. And, and I'm not, you know, I recognize we are working awfully hard within the Department of Community Investment, that we've worked awfully hard within this administration. Again, unprecedented levels. However, we are at a critical time. We have critical needs, and I think we need, <laughs> we need dedicated staff toward it that can help pull together and even shift some of our service models that we have been used to and that we have been, you know, trying to get at the problem. I mean, there, there's some radical shifts. I think the task force report was a start, but, you know, there's a flurry of activity and then it drops. There's a flurry of activity and then it drops. I think we really need a sustained person. And if it's the city of South Bend that has to lead it, then good for us. We should do it. And it, and it doesn't take much. There's great models in other cities. Um, Indianapolis is a fine model. The Community Foundation has come down board. Large organizations, the Lilly Endowment, we had business community leaders sit here last week, and they're only reflective, uh, 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 the Vols, I'll just name them, they're only reflective of a much larger business community that wants this they want this solved that they want different, you know, they want creative solutions. But until we have somebody that is actually, you know, that's their focus, that's their task, and it's their day-to-day, -day, they show up at work and do it, then we're, we're just going to continue to be fragmented and continuing to miss critical deadlines. Um, and and we, 
we can't afford to do that. It's a, it's a reflection on us and our ability to do what, you know, our basic, one of our basic city jobs is, is, is housing. Um, and as I said, if it's, we have been leading, but we, I think we need to do more and we need to make an investment. Um, or maybe it's some job description changes, but this, this can't, you know, be volleyed around and it, 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 we can't, you know, throw stuff at the neighborhoods and, um, you know, actually ask people to get it. This is a tough issue. It is a tough issue. If it was easy, it would have been solved a long time ago. I've had 30 years in this field, on the deep in it, but also on the sidelines. And the environment has changed. We need to, to uh, reflect our ability. I mean, we need to somehow keep up with that change in a manner that moves the needle in a much more time efficient manner to hit deadlines in a minimum for god's sake the weather amnesty date sure. thank you anybody else so okay. thank you for your leadership on the letter right. and, no and everybody's leadership anything else not i'm at peace I, again i thank you for your comments councilwoman Broden, and you hit it and you summarize it very well so again i encourage us all to join that call to action um talk to our leadership talk to, uh, we all have different people we have influence with so to share them and i thank those who are already doing something and let's move forward to take care of our obligations thank you i really have a question yes. Yes. Uh, councilman davis um, part of the, your call uh, to action was to pull the various uh, uh, entities together so who would be doing that what's the time frame and when is that going to happen good question um my job is to i would like to do this early mm -hmm. in the spring okay so you will be hearing me come back with um again similar to what we have did with um i know um president scott's working on that with the issue with transportation mm -hmm. you told me something on that same okay. matter where we come together mm -hmm. uh, and also um that's just a starting point mm -hmm. and then we can uh, envision us having representation from people plus we want to have people who are at the table who are dealing with homelessness um those who are service providers plus people who are actually um dealing with housing instability themselves mm -hmm. so many times leaders make all the decisions for people but we want to have the input of people who are actually going through yeah. that so we can form a, a, a strong collaboration to hear people who are business leaders plus people who are actually living the challenges because everybody sees the elephant in a different viewpoint mm -hmm. and we need to make sure that we have a um, good picture of it I'll be more happy to work with you thank you that. thank you Councilman okay anything else seeing then we'll open up to the floor for privilege of the floor privilege floor this is where individuals we wish to address the council will state their name and address uh, individuals must be limited to will be limited to three minutes only maximum time period for this portion is 30 minutes individuals may address only issues which the city has jurisdiction individuals shall not be permitted to talk about any topics heard tonight on previous agenda and we can assign uh, any privilege floor request to either the city administration or committees if you would please go Chairman Benicki, 3822 Ford Street. As I promised you earlier, Tim, I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, as most of you know, I was privileged this year and blessed to get my sidewalk and curb replaced. I'm the only one in the block. Oliver mm -hmm. took care of me. Of course, and all the rest of the neighbors hate me. And uh, no. my concern is that the curb is already cracking. And I went by a couple of the other places where the city did the curb and sidewalk program, and I thought it was odd when they did mine. They didn't do the whole sidewalk. They did just the tree lawn part of the sidewalk, but they didn't do the sidewalk in front of my driveway, nor did they do the driveway entrance itself. And I'm not sure if that should have been done or who to contact to see if it was supposed to be done. I, know. I already sent Oliver pictures of it yeah, because it was within um, 30 days of them putting the concrete in for the curb that it was cracking. It's, it's um, okay. Yeah. Sure. So no, obviously no it won't last another 30 years if it's already cracking. It's yeah. rain on your parade. 
She's correct. Also, um, I have a friend that lives in sophomore housing, and it seems to me like that the city council gave Miami Hills tax abatements and, or helped them with. They were going to redo their housing, and part of the deal was they were going to clean it up and get rid of the rough environment that's living there, and that hasn't happened. She has had three shootings from Miami Hills, you know, which butts up against Southmore within a month. I don't know if there's anything the city can do to help. And as far as getting rid of all the felony conviction people that live there, they never moved them out. They're still there. It's still a rat hole. So I don't know if there's anything that you could do to help the people in Southmore who are living there. Thanks. Right. Thank Happy you. Happy Thanksgiving. Same to you. Next name address. Hi, Council. Hello. Uh, Sid Kessel, 422 Kennedy Drive. Um, I spoke with Gavin earlier about a project. Um, I have, as a citizen advocate, I have a lot of resources that I use when people ask me questions on how to get help with something. I gave him about 12 brochures, I want to say. Um, asked that the clerk's office uh, scan them in and that they could be on your laptop so that if you had a citizen ask you, you would have that resource as well. Um, I also asked the council, um, if you were in an electronic age, those people working at home, uh, listening at home, um, I think you should be able to give comments too. And so working at uh, you being able to email questions or tweet questions or whatever for the council and be a part of the process from home, I think we should be able to do. And that's part of my ADA uh, uh, part as a, a citizen advocate. I'd like to remind everyone that the outstanding debt, I went on the uh, state website today. For the city of South Bend, the outstanding debt is $290,495,504. Um, that works out to um, over uh, $2,871.42 per person in South Bend. Um, the state uh, thinks that anywhere between 800 to 1400 is reasonable, and we're at double that, $2,800 per person in South Bend with the current debt load. Um, I think the council needs to look at the debt bubble. Um, it looks like it doesn't drop off till 2024. And so in considering new debt, considering taking on bonds and things like that, I think we need to be real cognizant of that because if there's an economic downturn, which of course happens, and the COET suddenly drops, um, that's really going to create a shortfall. And um, on a personal level, I helped someone who was homeless at the homeless center, and he's back on his feet. He has his home. He's back with his daughter. And I got to thinking about that. Um, I took on one individual. I can't take on everybody. <laughs> and I think that we need to create a, if you look at the AA model where someone has a sponsor. You have 30 seconds. Um, I think that the churches and religious organizations could adopt one homeless person, sponsor them, make sure they get their clothes, their medication, get to their appointments, uh, get whatever programs they need. Um, I think, you know, uh, what is it, light work among many hands. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we could do. Uh, Faith in Indiana might be a good uh, bridge between the group of um, homeless providers and the, um, the faith groups in Indiana, uh, in Michigan. That's good. Did I run out? Yep. Can I make it? <laughs> yeah, right on that. Um, thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, before we clarify, could you clarify real quick, just for the record, and we don't always do this, but with the issue with um, the bond, I mean, the monies that was scheduled for Miami Hills? Yeah, and what I said earlier today is um, uh, we approve this council and the Economic Development uh, Board approved a bond for them to take out money for re improvements. They never followed through on that bond. It, it was because it was a bond within the municipality had come through us for blessing for our approval. 
uh, for them to do it. They never did follow up on that. I think they also went for a tax credit, um, and I think that might have came before us, too, and they didn't do that. But there are some other – we'll talk offline. So – in, 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 is it a new ownership too, or is it the same people? Uh, no, not since you and I talked. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, all right, thanks. Uh, with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Don't waste time. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. I'll do that. Did you get a copy of that uh, paperwork that was here? Did everybody get it? Uh, uh, here you go, sir. Thanks for putting that in there. Thank you. Everybody got it. Thank you. This is a Yep, I think that's one of the problems, but it'd be good to play Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs>